<coughs> Hello? Oh my god, you guys look so cute today. I swear. I swear. Exil, hello, welcome to the stream. Hello, Char. Hello, gamer. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are ready for this stream. I'm very hyped. I'm very hyped. Exil, you're speaking facts today. I did win that fight. Doesn't matter what people say, I won that fight. No one can stop me from winning. Drig has been his his ass has been beat officially. Hello gamer! I am the German enjoyer. Maybe I am. Maybe I am maybe I am the biggest German enjoyer out there. Who knows? <laughs> Yo! Honestly, I hope this stream will be a hit. Um, it took so long to download this game, and it was very pricey, so I hope you guys will like it. Of course, don't feel obligated to watch this. If you're not into these kind of games, that's okay too. You have nothing to worry about. You can also just check out another stream. I don't really care. It's all, it's, it's up to you. All right, let's see. Music, shut the fuck up. Thanks. <laughs> so there was one chat. Chat, why are you doing this? Yeah, this is what I was talking about. So I was um um look, so this is what happened. I put my stream in a higher uh quality so that you guys would be able to enjoy this game into a higher quality, right? So then I wanted to transform everything back into their position. And then my mouse was like, yeah, no, you're not allowed to do this. Um, so I restarted uh, Streamlabs and then the mouse still didn't want to respond. So right now we're just transforming with the... Thanks, gamer. <laughs> oh, man. So right now we're just transforming with the, the arrow keys. The keys. 4K could be so beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My computer cannot handle this, but I we'll still do this. Yo, Arthur, how you doing? I hope you're doing good. Look, I can't transform anything. My mouse, I, I can't even move shit. It's so weird. Doesn't matter. Got back from internship. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're not too tired. Um, uh, let's move you guys over here. I still can't move shit! Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Enter. Oh, I hope the game is not too loud. No, I think it's actually not very loud. I think it's fine like this. I'm seeing double. <laughs> no, that's not okay! I hope you're doing all right. Uh, let me go into my stream lab thing. All right, here we go. Here we go. Um. Oh. Uh... B. All right. Bro, Drake! Welcome to the stream. I know, I know, but... Ugh. Jeez, you don't have... No! Now you're making me feel guilty. Sorry. I'm sorry. Alright, so we're just gonna start with the first game, right? The first game. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Yeah, we're just gonna start off with this. Oh my god. They're working in episodes? I love that. Okay, first episode. 
the first turnabout. Also, my voice acting is going to be on fleek this stream. I promise you that. Yeah. I will decide your move. Hell yeah. <gasps> oh, wait, that's not... Hey yo, hey yo! Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Oh shit. I I've gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. That's so evil. What the fuck? August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oh, awesome. We're in court. <laughs> Kubib's attorney will decide your move. Um, Guys, if I would be a lawyer, I would be awesome. <laughs> if you hire Kubib as your attorney, you're just going to win by default. <laughs> fuck yeah. I always win. I'm a winner. I was born a winner. Boy, am I nervous. Oh my god. He sounds like a nerd. He's gonna get the nerd voice. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh wait, that's a woman. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Holy honkers. Hey, yo. No, 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 no. How can I... Remove the text. How can I remove the text? Good luck at work, Drake. Oh, hi, Chief. Woo, I'm glad I made it on time. <laughs> well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. This is a murder trial? Oh, wait, that's right. We saw it in the cutscene. I'm so stupid. Yo, Zeus! Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. <laughs> Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life. Everything. It's all over. Fuck. This guy's gonna be awesome. He's gonna be awesome. Watch this. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah. It's him. The, the spare. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Watch this. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It's nice. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. This guy looks awesome! A personal matter? Damn. <laughs> Tough case, Kobe. You know, fun fact, I wanted to be an attorney when I was little. I wanted to be a lot of shit, but one of the things was an attorney. Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm finished. I'm finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Mm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. So, so that was his girlfriend? <gasps> Poor guy. He got pinned onto the murder and it was his girlfriend? Damn. Imagine a Kobe and Dizzy Phoenix Ace Attorney crossover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would that be amazing, huh? Why Dizzy of all people? My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. 
a young woman was killed in her apartment. Wait, you call that a simple case? Phoenix, are you okay? The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Buds. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Buds. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. I think that Drake Phoenix would be better come. <laughs> yeah. First drive was on the boxing side, partners in the law. Man. Oh, man. That would be so cool. But I know better than anyone. He's a good guy, Hart. That, and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case. To clear his name. To smack you in the face while macking you. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. No, but, you know, I won the fight, so I will be smacking. Yeah, sure, sure. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. We're back in the courtroom, let's fucking go! I mean, with Char by my side as a secretary, I should be fine. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Oh, this guy looks like a jerk. Holy fuck! I thought someone was knocking. Exil? I will. Exil? Exil? <laughs> <laughs> That caught me off guard. <laughs> How dare you! Oh, ordering court. <laughs> is that the <laughs> exit? Was the is the the guy? If a distraction is needed, I can always rise the skirt and open up the button of the shirt. Oh, Char, man, you're the hot lady. You're Mia. You're the chief. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, your honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, your honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, your honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Ugh, hands shaking. Eyesight fading. That's fucking me. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concise. Conci what? Concise? Okay. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. It's Larry. Why would... The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? I know this one. Glad I read the case before it covered to cover many, so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No. No way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? Look, it's Char. Goddamn Char. Hmm, Char. Jeez. You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. Nice honkers. Jeez. I think I feel the migraine coming on. Look. Victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Wow. Okay. Cindy. She's called Cindy. Okay. Well, that was easy peasy. You can look as much as you like, but no touching in court. Hey, yo. Char, I mean, if you put it like that. Okay, the victim is Cindy, not Cinderblock. Um, 
The victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct? Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Uh... Cause of death, loss of blood due... Bl loss of blood due to blunt trauma. She was hit with the blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. Hey, yo, Char spoiling? You're so silly. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem so much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. No spoilers. <laughs> Char is out there throwing the spoilers. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, your honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. I can't spoil, I don't know. <laughs> it was found laying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Add it to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. I can't spoil a game I don't know about. Bro, my <laughs> wow, Char. Don't worry, I understood you. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Look at that handsome fucker. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls, or seeing me, ever. Was- was it to you anyway? Mr. Buds, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumb. In fact, she had completely abandoned you, and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport. 7.30, the day before the murder. Okay. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Oh! Ooh, well now it gets interesting. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Sh uh, what should we do? What should we do? Wait and see what happens? Or stop him from answering? Nah, I mean, Mia gave us the hint that we should stop him. Let's stop that. Larry! My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. 
That question is irrelevant to this case. <laughs> we got him. Guys, we got him. Dude, Nick! What do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, poor guy. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, what? Have a good meal, Zeus! See you later! Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> oh my god, this guy's... This guy's over. It's done for him. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? Uh, have him answer. Honestly, stop him from answering. We probably shouldn't interrupt this guy twice in a row. We could get in trouble for that. But then again, if we have him answer honestly... No, we'll have him answer honestly. We can't really stop this one. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. We must answer though it's needed. Yeah. Our client is dumb. Char, we... We are such good attorneys, we are such a good defense, and then this client fucks it all up for our career. Oh! <gasps> Guilty! <laughs> he is guilty. He is. <laughs> Excel. <laughs> he is. Fucking. Oh. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is like, Oh my god, chart. Our job. Exil, we're gonna die. Lying? Exil, wait till the proof backs us up. <laughs> Prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mrs. Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies no matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Our firm is going to go to the gutter. Yeah, we're dead, Char. We're dead. All we got going on for us is the good looks. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call his witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Oh, this guy's it. Char, I can feel it. This one's it. He's it. He's it. He's among us. He's 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 the imposter. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness account. Oh, this is testimony. Okay. This man is sus. Don't look like the purple guy from... He is the purple guy from Five Nights at Freddy's. Look at him. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment, and I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I quealed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. 
it was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. He smells like he just defended sussy. He is. Look at his sussy head. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per perusal. Peru perusal? Peru <laughs> blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, uh, yes, your honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, your honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. <gasps> Yo, Spooner, welcome to the stream. Oh my god, Spooner. Look how hot she is. Oh, this is Char. Um... What exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Hot women. Oh. Open the court record with tab, then point out the contradiction in his testimony. Hmm. Wait, I can check profiles? Hey, yo, Mia! Age 27. Okay, okay. We got this, Jar. We will make that nasty man regret his actions. Fuck yeah! Larry Butt. Oh, so this is what Sandy looks like. She's she's pretty, uh, she's pretty hot. Alright. We can do this, we can do this. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apart <laughs> <It's part> but <laughs> Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quilled and fried and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Let's press on this one. Let's press. Let's press. Let's press. The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes. I mean, no. No, it wasn't. Right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment. Or did you? Oh, oh, that? I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Okay, okay. That was nothing, guys. False alarm. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remembered the time exactly. Yo, Ru, welcome to the stream! Welcome! Uh, let's press, let's press. 1 p.m., are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. All right, all right, all right, all right. Time of death, 4 p.m. <gasps> Guys, we found the contradiction. <laughs> Sorry. Objection. Sorry, I had to go monkey there. You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Fuck yeah, we're awesome. 
draws them. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Ooh, we got him! We got him! We got him! Oh, that! Oh, uh. This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Ah, uh, well, I. Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. It's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always bigger, 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 more lies. <laughs> Purple guy is about to get his ass whooped. That's fucking right. The witness has being caught lying. Now all the statement is grumbling. You got this, Kobe. We got this in the bag. We got this. Where's your fun? <laughs> I can't talk. I'm sorry. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Okay, we can do this. Wait, I remember now. Do you care to give your testimony again? All right, another testimony. We can do this, Char. We can do this. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. Hmm. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. This guy's sus. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Oh, we, we, we've got this one. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Press. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right, I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. The blackout! Char, you're a genius! You're a genius! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Fuck you, Sawi! We fucking got you! You couldn't have heard the television. Or a video. Girl. I... well... <sighs> the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawi? No, I... I find it quite puzzling my... Thank you, Exo. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. That so scared me. I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Oh, wait. I remember though. Mr. Sawit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. Wait, did you see that? His hair was exploding. It was pretty cool. M my apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. He has been- Arthur, you saw it too! You saw it too! Alright, one more time, buddy. 
actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. How do you know it's a clock? It, it, in, in the report, it only stated that it was a statue of the thinker. It didn't say it was a clock, right? Or did it? The statue in the shape of the thinker. Yeah, it never said it was a clock. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Could be five head. Ah, I am. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. It's not. It's not a clock. Or main. It could be a clock, but how do you know it's a clock? Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Oh, we got him. We got him. He's done. What? You and your objections and your evidence? Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? I, that's a clock. Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, clock I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yeah, but you have to flip the head to hear it. And he said he didn't touch anything in the apartment. So, yeah, we have problems. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Damn! Damn! Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Could we with the power of justice? Hell yeah! Guys, we're gonna- Huh? What do you want? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <coughs> Sorry. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, the, the, I mean, I, I saw. Oh, holy sh. <laughs> he just threw his hair at the fucking. Okay, yeah, we know enough. We know enough. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it was him. I tell you, I saw him. He, he killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Holy shit. He's, he's kind of mad. Order. Order. <laughs> Christ. The fucking hair. Oh my god. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. 
Y your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Ooh. Have a nice lunch, Pooch. Shit. Mm. Examine the clock's batteries. Ask the neighbors. Try sounding the clock. Asking the neighbors is definitely a no-go. I think it's try sounding the clock. Then you can hear it. it has the sound. Maybe we should try that. <laughs> Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Bain, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Oh! Yeah, I want that clock too. It looks awesome. I think it's 19.34. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh oh, what's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. It's because of the... Wait, what's that clip? Hold up. <laughs> it's, it's the coffee one. <laughs> He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happened. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Ugh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> is just spot on exactly thank you exu not so fast mr sawit mia i mean chief listen up right don't throw this one away not like this think but gee it's over i can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder nobody can prove that um well yes but that doesn't mean you can still win Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? <laughs> right, right? <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yeah, well, because of the blackout. It would have probably been the blackout started at noon, so then the clock would have blacked out as well, so it would be stuck at 1. 
So then when it was 5 o'clock, when the murder murder was, happened, it was still on 1. And that, oh, we figured it out. Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? I will do that. <laughs> Thank you for clipping that. That was a fucking gold moment. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The blackout record. Um, excuse me? This proves your claim. How? I can't see what that evidence has to do with the clock. Huh? But it is a blackout! Alright, Mr. Wright. The time is not on your side. Be quick about it. Fuck! The clock works with batteries. Oh! It... <laughs> Why are you guys throwing me shit, man? Hello, Red Fur! Welcome to the stream! The passport? The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Time zones! Char! Time zones! Should we present this one? Maybe she got the clock from Paris. Holy shit. Take that. Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Oh my god, Char, you're a genius. Hello, Snorri! Welcome to the stream! We're putting some people in prison today. Our firm is strong. Yeah! Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit. Or should I say, Mr. Did It. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, he's foaming. Oh, he's... Oh. He died. Order. Order, I say. He's dead. <laughs> well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. This, Mr. Pei, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point... This is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! And with that, this court is adjourned. Boom! We killed him. We killed him. Boom. Turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Damn. She got killed. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oh, we're back, bitches! Phew. I still can't believe we won. Right. 
Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. Uh, thanks. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end in such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. The lawyering is booming. <laughs> Business is booming. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. What the fuck? My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and going soon. Good. Wait, no. Wait, I mean, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Oh, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts Innocent. Harry Butts? Mia, you fucking pulled a Harry Butts. Cleve, can you soon maybe send me an example of your character kaiju? I want to make some fan art if that's alright. Oh, that's so sweet of you. What the fuck? I'll send you her reference sheet. Let me see, let me see. Aw, Arthur! You don't have to! That's so sweet! What the fuck? <laughs> Harry Butts. <laughs> Harry Potter? Huh? Mia, what the fuck? Thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey. Hey here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Wait. But she wasn't. I thought she bought this in Paris. How are the times off then? I think we. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry... Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing. Really. Isn't that right, right? Or isn't it right, right? Wasn't that guy innocent? I... Yeah. What's this guy doing? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh yeah, that's right! What the heck is she talking about? Well, it's probably the statue, because she kept the statue. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Boom. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Yo, Dalian! Welcome to the stream! Oh my god, it's Dalian! Oh my god, it's life! Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. 
All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Wow, what a cheesy message. Thanks, Mia. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, thanks, Mia. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent buds. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part, at least. Just be Kobe Pikachu. <laughs> exactly. Just be yourself, guys. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Damn, Mia! You're hitting on me! Oh my god, Mia! And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's so good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry will be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Uh, Lucky Kobe's gonna get some Mia time. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Uh, Don't die, Mia. Mia, if you die, I'm going to scream. A brand new episode! Yeah, safe. Oh, we didn't get to check the art of the episode. I wanted to check the art. Hello? This is Maya. Hey, Maya. It's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. Oh, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. Put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm, well, there is a possibility that it might turn out that way, yeah. Can you come by the office tonight, say 9, to pick it up? I'll be in pre pre pre, pre <laughs> fuck. I'll be in pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Oh, bye. We're here! We're here! Yo, we got the conversation recorded, bitch! September 5. 9pm, Faye and Co. Law Offices. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be... The thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Oh, oh, you are not my cogniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Oh, oh. My dear Miss Faye, I'm so very sorry. 
but I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. Mia! 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 Who the fuck is this guy? Who is- oh. Red, white, blue. Maybe she's not dead. Maybe she's just in the uh, in the in the hospital, guys. We we could be okay. September five, nine p.m. Finko lost. Uh oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood. Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Move! 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 That smell. Blood. Sis. Someone's there. Oh no! <laughs> That's how I die. Now I won't use the new skirt. No. Sure. You will revive. I will have my new assistant and you will be it. Chief? Chief? Chief! Who are you? Oh. Did she just punch me? Strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Ooh! <laughs> Human cloning is illegal, Kobe. We, I won't tell anyone. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. Perfect view! <laughs> Chief! Examine her boobs. Chief! It's hard seeing her like this, but if there, if there are any clues here... She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Hmm. There are some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Huh? A piece of paper? It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya? Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. Bruh. Why would she write down her sister's name? I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police. Find out what that girl is doing here. Shards of glass are scattered on the floor. They seem to be the remains of the glass light stand. We knew that already. Phone! Right! I'd better call the police! That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from the outside window? Hey, yo, guys. I'm not saying anything. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. 
Oh shit, we got cod. We got cod, guys. Scatter, scatter, scatter. Bingo, ledger book. Everything is written in the chief's ultra neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. Computer! Surprisingly, the chief was never good with machines. About all she used this PC was for email. She picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. This is where she filed her case records and recent rulings. Hmm. Chief's chair. Simple functional design. Feels pretty good to sit in too. There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel. Nice, luxurious place. Should we go back? Oh wait, the statue is still here. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon. Again. Let's move and see how Maya's doing. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on that sofa. Uh-oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya? Fay? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name? Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the corner. Talk. What happened? She seemed to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I have to know. Um, excuse me? Can you tell me what happened? I came in. The room was dark. And sis. Sis. So she was already dead. So, you're the chief's sister. I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting? This late at night? Yes, she said she wanted to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes, it was the clock. It was the thinker. I'm gonna present her the receipt. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. Th that's my name! Why? Why would you write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would she Why would sis write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. The popo! The po 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 police The po 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 The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! Oh, this guy looks like Looker from Pokemon. Scatter! Guys, scatter the police! Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoes. Is this guy really called Dick? Am I supposed to take this seriously? Dick Gumshoe. Alright, doesn't matter. I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. We received the report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying that they saw murder. Must have been that woman I saw. Oh man, she's pretty hot. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch kite. Great. Just great. They got us, but I won't talk. <laughs> Shit, now they think we're the suspects. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have. Nah. Whoa! Excuse me! Does <laughs> this word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What? The victim drew this here note. This here note in her... What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood. See? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Killer? Case closed. You're coming down to the pre 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 precinct, ma'am. 
What? Oh, poor Maya. She didn't do it. She, she didn't hurt anyone. Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6th. Visitor's room. I'll be heading off now. I'm gonna play some Roblox hard with some buddies of mine. You have fun on stream, though. <laughs> Thank you so much, Arthur. Have fun. Thank you for stopping by. Mom's spaghetti? Fuck yeah. <laughs> My eyes were heavy. Mom's sp No, wait. Wasn't it arms were heavy? Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh, it's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh... Uh... Of course I will. First things first, I better get her cheered up. Yeah, of course I will. Cheer up! R really? Whoa, did I say the wrong thing? She looks sadder now. Um, wh what's wrong? You don't think I can do it? No, no one could. Who would believe me? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought... It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I, I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on it the whole time. It's been a while. <laughs> so he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. Yo, three amigos, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Oh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go if I ever get in trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. Wow. Did they really just say that about us? We are like the best ever. And they did. How could you, Mia? You were like so hot. And then you say something like that. Holy shit. That's what, that's what she said. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's, it's true, I guess. But... At the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia... I know. How many times has Maya got accused? This is the first time? Out of probably the many times. We, ha we haven't gotten in court yet, but we will get there. Probably. Has she just been thrown in jail for nuking the country? Ugh. <laughs> Oh, she looks very innocent. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. A acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm, I'm a spirit medium. In training. A s spirit medium? Pretty sure that qualifies as strange. This is our two case in our firm, and the first time with Kobe best friend of it, we're going to take court by a storm. Fuck yeah, Char. I know I can always trust you in these cases. I'm the head of the new courtroom. I can take this easily. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yeah. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. 
She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yeah, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in any case? Um, right, she said something about that. I remember! Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yeah, I'm pretty sure her conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it! Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. Awesome. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right! Oh, I just remembered that detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask for the bread. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Maya's memo added to the court record. Wait, why is this one not checked yet? Let's check that one. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around 9 o'clock. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Th then I found her. My sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Poor Maya. Poor girl. She just witnessed her sister getting murdered. And now she's accused for murdering her own sister. Damn. Surian Acolyte. A uh, medium in training. That's right. The Fae family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fae family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course! She left the mountains to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I had no idea. Hmm. Wait! What? So you're a real, honest-to-goodness spirit medium? With ESP and all that? Yes. In training. Well, can't you contact me as spirit then? You can just ask her who killed her. I, I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm, I thought that would be too easy. Um, huh? Something the matter? I, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Oh, of course, I guess. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I, I see. Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Well... We better go to this guy then. Grossberg Law Offices. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later.
That's a pretty cool painting. That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the prize is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive looking books. Hmm, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. A solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. A table for clients. Hmm, an elegant ebony key, a, 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 a case. Pfft. Ebony case. <gasps> And if I'm not mistaken, that lighter's made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. Wow. I want to be a lawyer if I get paid like this. Expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. Alright, well... Hey! What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry. I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm, I'd better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. Family? What about your family? I only have my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. I don't know. So she could still be alive? The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They saw a lot of spiritual power run, 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 what, what, what? They say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man, and he, he, he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer, and she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yeah, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent, or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. So, who was this man who uh, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir, and everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved, we thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. Police's consultation with the medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. White? Uh... Mr. White? Walter White? <gasps> no way! Holy shit. Is he back yet? Let's check in. No, he's not. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busy, busy, busily searching for clues. What the fuck? Hey, you there. This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Oh, guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That Bud's guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven to be innocent. Um, right. And you were... 
Detective Gumshoe. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right, at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. <laughs> I'm gonna call him Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. Y yes, sir. Beaver right there? Um, <clears throat> you're her, her lawyer, right, pal? You got business here? You better do it quick. Oh, he thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. About Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Huh? You want to know the results, eh? Now, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright, you can see the report, but that's all. Easy! Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? The city's put prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. <gasps> it's the guy! Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means, you being an lawyer, you being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Yeah, of course. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his quote-unquote guilty verdict. Aw, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely so human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Shit, we got it. Oh, Edgeworth. We're fucked. Sky's blue, and so am I. <laughs> wow, okay. There's that hotel right across the way. Mia's favorite pot of plant. I remember it had this bizarre name no one could ever remember. Coraline's trick to pal. Who's that? Mia's desk. Perfectly clean as always. The only thing that's missing is Mia. Aww. There's a horrendous amount of legal books here. Scarier still is that Mia probably read all of these. Let's go check up on... Wait, no, we already checked up on you. Is this guy here yet? No, he isn't. Oh, wait! We needed uh, to present this. Of course, of course. I was wondering, did you see Maya's face cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh oh, he's on to me. Uh... I mean, he's not the smartest, so we can just lie to him, right? Yeah. Okay, I can't be straight with this guy, but what should I tell him? Something the matter? Oh no, um. That carrying strap on the cell phone. This? It says the Steel Samurai, warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. The Steel Samurai? That action hero on TV? Yeah, you see, the strap is a collector's item. She was worried it might get lost if it went down to the pre. 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 pre, 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 pre 
That's what she said? Um, yeah. Okay, pal. I wrote down all the numbers she called anyway. Here you go. Seems she didn't notice you recorded the conversation. My cell phone. Easy! Check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. Guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You all done, pal? Uh, yeah, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Ooh! We're definitely gonna chat with her. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. Indeed! Oh, we're gonna talk to her. Fuck yeah. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name, Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already, then? <laughs> You're trying your lawyerly tricks on me now. She's not to go out outside her room until the trial. So she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. She might be a witness of the murder of poor sexy Mia, even though she's not as sexy as Kobe before- Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean... Of course. Gatewater Hotel, let's go! September 6, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Ooh, look at that champagne, okay. <gasps> She's so cute! She's so adorable! Oh my god! Holy shit, guys. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. <laughs> What's that in the drawer? That looks like a screwdriver, doesn't it? That's sus. Char, we already- Oh, you're so cute. Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Oh, let me go freshen up so I can look at the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. Let's check that screwdriver, shall we? There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! <laughs> hey! What are you doing? No touching. Oh, a bad boy. You really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. She is so I wonder what could be inside the drawer. What is she doing with the screwdriver? What? This girl is sus. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Oh, observe. Incident. You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. Um, better not. Uh, what? Sh hey, yo! This girl is sus. This girl is sus. Better not encourage her. Uh, do you know that thing that occur uh, happened the other day? The bad thing? What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it. Pretty please? Mm, let me see. Um, well, dream on. If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy. Um, could you just- who exactly are you? Oh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? No, hey, I'm just doing my job here. 
<laughs> you know, you're cute when you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um, <laughs> right. Can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no. <laughs> and you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh boy. Oh my god. We need to be professionals, Kobe. No peek into the booba. Shit. Welcome back, Zeus. Shit, no peeking, guys. No peeking. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Oh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives, like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage, hmm? Miss May doesn't like nosy little liars. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Matt, yeah, she is really so strong. She is. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Slay! We gotta examine more, guys. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Fae Co. Law Office's building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. Well, that's good to know. Simple bed. It's been recently made. Nothing eye-catching here. Ah, a still scene painting. A painting. She's guilty? You think she's guilty? But she's cute though. <laughs> I still see him painting. But should that be still life? Whatever. One of those is hanging on the wall. The flowers are fake as expected. I know some flowers are shielded, but that's about the extent of my plural knowledge. Hmm. What's this side, I wonder? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe later. Wow, she's real sick. A bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must have been staying with her. Oh, she's so cute. She's super cute. So who cares if she would be killed? Yeah! She's too cute to be guilty. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't think I have anything to present to her, do I? How could I possibly give you any information in good conscience? The witness! Oh, uh, of course she's gonna say something like that. But your honor, he, she was just goofing around. She was just being silly. All right, all right. I have your phone, you stupid bitch. Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? Maya's eyes closed. She listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, your tears began to roll down her cheeks. Thank you. Oh, don't be so sad. Don't be so sad. Don't be so silly. Is the Grosberg man back yet? Hmm. Seems like Mr. Grosberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. <clears throat> if that wasn't the most over the top clearing throat I've ever heard. Aha, uh -huh. so you're the one they say has been looking for me? Uh, yes, that's me. He looked even grander than I imagined. Hum, that badge on your collar. Oh, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Y yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy? And how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm? Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grosberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, 
Well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Faith. Hey, yo. He does the no bitches Faith. Ah, uh, yes. Maya Faith. Go on. Why the strange reaction? Ha <laughs> ha, cha cha. A cha cha? <gasps> I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. But wait a second, how did you know the trial was tomorrow? Um, ahem. <clears throat> anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, end of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? That's sus. That's so sus. That's really sus. How can you just refuse like that? Please tell me why you won't take the case. Mm <clears throat> well, you see, it's just I'm busy, you see? But the client is Mia Fay's sister. <clears throat> Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course. I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. Wh what do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I, I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? I have nothing more to, to discuss with you. What's going on here? He's a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire, little bitch. How did you know Mia Faith? She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. That's quite a painting. Ahaha, ha, you notice. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. Can we present him the, 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 the letter? Or, oh, we don't have that. Do we? No, we already examined all of this, so. Um, let's tell Maya. But I want to buy Kobe's paintings. <laughs> Man. My paintings are worth the shipping costs. That's all. Aya. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Well, you see, I I really don't think you should use that guy. He, he didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? Uh -huh. I see. I've been abandoned then. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? No, hell no. We're gonna defend this bitch. I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well... 
Someone else is the culprit. You aren't the culprit. Someone else is. H how do you know? I... I um, have a hunch. Given the evidence, it would be easy to assume that Maya was the killer. But there's something about this whole thing that smells... fishy. That witness's strange behavior? Is that all an act? And the way that lawyer refused to help out Maya. But more than all that, she has no one left to help her. Nothing is more sad or more lonely than that. I know, I've been there a long, long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for people who have no one on their side. Smash saver. We're gonna save Maya. No need to worry, we're gonna save her. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can't count on me. That's so kind of you. Hell yeah, we're gonna save her. Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Whew, she smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yeah, and I trust you, so you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So, what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Should we go back to her? Oh my, who is this handsome man? Oh, hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I'm the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, uh, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the um, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please stay as long as you'd like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no, hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. You came back with? Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there's a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. <gasps> Mr. White, guys, it's Walter White, Walter White. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. Oh! <gasps> Sure, Mr. White! White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Let's check out the screwdriver. Fuck it. There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? A wiretap? What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? A wiretap? There's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all of this. I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean... Oh! I'll get to this woman's bottom. Oh, bellboy, still here? Oh, time to scram. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. Char, we are so sus. Holy shit, Char, we are so sus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, you were in this too. I just know it. <sighs> Let me stretch for a second. Get some water. Alright, alright. Let's see. Oh, hold up. Let me get my phone off the charger. All right, <clears throat> courtroom number one, 10 a.m. Oh, it's Edgeworth. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Faye. Prosecution is ready, your honor. Oh my God, you look so hot. What the fuck? Edgeworth. Oh. Edgeworth. Nice beard, Josh. <laughs> nice beard, Santa. Oh! <laughs> no! Don't fart! Edgeworth, don't fart! Come on, you. Just... thought you were a nice guy, Edgeworth, I swear. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I swear. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weaknesses today, or he'll be on my—he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mrs. Edgeworth. M Mrs. Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, fuck. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Now, detective. Y yes sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Statue again? Yeah, they don't know that it was a clock. We must not forgore that. <gasps> of course. We must not forgore. It's a clock. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. This is not a statue. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay. Miss Maya Fay. <laughs> and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Someone farted? Huh? Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, 
she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. Huh, <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, your honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Let's do it, let's press him. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Press. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay, I press. Not sure it did much though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. Defendant Miss Maya Faye and the lawyer Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. Hold on just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious and she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, I, I guess she is Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes! <laughs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Oh no, here we go again. He's just as dumb as the as Larry Bud. He is Larry Bud's 2.0. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Oh, you like that? That's my hard evidence. Oh, Jesus. Don't say it like that. Come on. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about that, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. That's not possible. The note was a receipt. Press. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Oh, then who did write it, smarty pants? Uh, who? Uh. Killer, of course. Anyone can see that. Huh. Saying the killer wrote her own name, buddy. Please, she was framed. Hold on, if that's the case, where's your evidence? Uh, huh, I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Well, Detective, tell us what was written on the memo you found. Edge dumb. Mia died instantly. 
Wait, that's right! Char, you're so smart! Mia did die instantly! Hold it! Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movie. This isn't a movie, Detective. <laughs> all those years watching CSI are paying off. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess. I haven't heard of many cases. No. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! Then it goes below. That's right. What he said. That's his full testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Well, we already know it. Present. Detective Gumshoe. There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No budding your way out of this one, detective. Oh, we got his ass. Order, order! Defense has a point. Someone who died immediately would have wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? But when? The day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being that autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. Good work, Opie. No, it was you doing the work, Char. My awesome assistant. What? The second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor. It's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Yo, Kim, welcome to the stream. How you doing? Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Just got home, Momozu. I'm quite goodish. Oh, it's good, it's good. Oh, you're home late. I hope you're doing okay. Autopsy report updated in the court record. 
Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yeah. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. <gasps> Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Here she comes. Here she comes. She's sus. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your... Did you see that? Did you see that? J j j jiggle physics? Hey, yo, Charlie you saw it too. <laughs> Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from went and winking. Oh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5 when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room, tee <laughs> hee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from Banco Law Offices? Mmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. And the woman, like, dodged to one side and then ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and uh, she hit her. And the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. H O. Hmm. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. But wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Hell yeah. It's my job. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright, let's see, let's see. Mm, when did she die again? Died from a blow? Oh, it doesn't say. Why did you look out the window exactly at the time? Why did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, she... What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Let's go for it. Let's see how far I can run with this. Shirley, you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... <sighs> Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Wow. No giggles will help you out of this. <laughs> Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? I saw 
saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, your honor. He's right. Mm, no, we will we'll keep questioning. Hold on a minute. The testimony stinks. W what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Uh, you're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> oh, we got her. 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 Mr. Wright. What's the meaning of this? Yeah, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Ooh. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks like far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentioned neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, your honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say? You mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, your honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. All right, all right, all right. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first check and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, hey. No one said clock in this whole... Hey. We got her. We already have her. We got this in the bag. The clock, um, the kind of statuey clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Teehee. <laughs> we got her, Char. Oh my god, this is too easy for us. We're a perfect team. I, she, I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. Rebozo. I did see everything, I did. The victim, the woman, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, and the girl, blah 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 blah. Press. A clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them at all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. Hmm... Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? Hey, yo! You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order. Order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh. 
The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial, trivial concern. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because I heard it? Yeah, I heard it since the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Bayco. No, I, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Bay and Co, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Mm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? Edge dummy, we got him. No, your honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have wrong because the clock is on. <gasps> your honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Because it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Oh, we got him. We got him. How could you possibly... Just take a look right now. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is, it is, as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is, as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. F fat? Well, Miss May? Oh. Quite the show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. Sounds British. He looks British. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there's no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Haha, <laughs> impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening, and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is the phone, of course. This damn mission is always running in my head. I gotta play this game again. Yes! I love playing the the good guy or the bad guy. I don't know. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, you have a girly phone. Oh, hey, wait. This isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? Th this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. The good detective. Better remember he's up for some evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Do you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? 
you could... Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I mean, it, ha it had to take the clock for us. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Gotcha, Paul. We got this guy. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. No. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know the weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what story was that again? I guess there's so many. Oops, I forgot. No, it couldn't be bought because Larry made it himself. But the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? The witness claims she had it seen before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Look, it was made by Larry Budd. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I, impossible! Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Whoa! We got him! <laughs> oh? Excuse is not on sale today? Damn! <laughs> Whoa, she's going. Hey, yo. Hey. Oh, she mad. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die. Whoa. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. She isn't cute anymore. Th this is the court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <sighs> oh. Oh. Silly me. <gasps> she's silly. <gasps> no, wait. Okay, she's she's so guilty. Because she's silly. Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> Tee-hee. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, your honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... He's guilty of lying to the court, as you are guilty of being cute. That's right. <sighs> the witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, your honor. Wait, that's not correct. There's no other way she could have known to think it was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Of course! It's the wiretap. Have a look at this. <gasps> Th that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Oh, <sighs> Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. 
Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... Uh... I present the defendant's self. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. What's up? You haven't called me in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to. Again? Is it this side? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May. You used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Objection. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Ugh. She Oh, she's not pretty anymore. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer. It's not fair. All of you, you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Um. Ugh. Fucking cry, baby. Shut up. That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping uh, irrelevant? Uh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that. And of course, I can't and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <clears throat> okay, so, the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was? Iced coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. Iced coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fade, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well... Come on, think of something. Should we call the bellboy? That's right, because the bellboy wanted me to leave a message from Mr. Walter White. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. 
I object to calling the bellboy. Well, why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Faye. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. Bruh. What should I do? <laughs> Bruh! Oh my god, stretch. Bruh. Except. Alright, I've got nothing to fucking throw. <laughs> Making demands like that. Fucking Edgeworth. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Cool. You fell right into my trap. Uh oh. Um, wait. Our firm fights till the end. <laughs> exactly. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work. I'm happy to be of service. The tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I'm the head bellboy at Five Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from my guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. He brings tea and pastries? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not passing on that. Right, I'm ready. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from my guest Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 on the dot. 9 on the dot, you say? Oh. Yes, I confirmed that, that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine. The time of the murder! I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the ice coffee to her guest, Miss May herself. Precisely nine, then? Precisely. Exactly, and most definitely, sir, not. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy? Tee hee. I'd like, like an iced coffee at exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Oh, oops. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, sh she, the guest, sir, favored me with, um, uh, an embrasser, sir. Hey, yo! Are you seeing this? Embrasser? Is that French for embrace? It's it's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. 
That was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Bad scrap! Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss Man was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is, is that it? Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest, protest, protest. W wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Objection. Your Honor, I must object. This charade, charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. Do I ask him about... Um... Should we ask about check-in? We know everything about the room service now and the bed making doesn't make sense. Tell me about check-in. Tell me about when you checked in Miss May. Oh, alright. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Excuse me, what exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir, but even I'd have a little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Oh, uh, oh, uh, I rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? Objection. I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? W well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thinking you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barista that I missed with who... He asked me not to mention if, uh, if, if I wasn't specifically asked to. Oof! Y you fool! Oh my god. I've done it. I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Y yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... Uh, the man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof. Your Honor, as he, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. Uh, Maya, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from his court. Oof! Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, your honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Faith. Court is adjourned. 
Wow, guys. Whew. Okay. I'm going to cut it here. Because it's already past the time I actually wanted to stop streaming. But it was a very... Uh, the tension was high, so I had to... To play it. But... I will see you guys on next Wednesday. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in this. Because it seems like... Uh, um, ugh, you know, it's not the... It's not the most uh, likable game to play. So I'll see what I'll play on Wednesday. But maybe we can come back to this. <laughs> I did awesome, of course. Oh, Glitch is uh, streaming. You can go as a Glitch. That's comfy, I like hearing you like read and have a good time. Yay, yippee! Also boobs, yeah. But we could continue with this on Wednesday and we can see how far we can go. I, I'm glad you guys liked it. Let's go to Glitch. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, though. Thank you. I love you guys. Oh, fuck. There you go. Boom. We're gonna continue. Oh, fuck. <laughs> We're gonna continue next Wednesday. I love you guys. I hope you guys stay safe. You better stay safe. Um. I love you guys. Um, Wednesday will be a small announcement as well, but it's nothing to be worried about, so it's all right. All right, let's move on to Glitch. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you, Exit for all the points. I love you. I love you. Big kisses. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I love you guys. <laughs>